When you bite the heel, your head is close to the foot. And you're liable to get stepped on. And that's exactly what happened at the cross. The serpent bit Jesus' heel and put him to death. But in doing that, that same heel landed on the serpent's skull and crushed him. This takes place, first of all, at the cross. You know, we don't know what the devil thought as Jesus hung on the cross and was dying. He didn't, we don't know what he thought the outcome of the crucifixion might be, but it's possible that the devil thought he had achieved victory here. It, it seems unimaginable to think that. But let me give you uh, some insight into how sin works. Sin is insane. Sin is irrational. Sin is madness. If we were rational creatures, we would never sin, you understand. People sin because they have lost their ability to reason properly. Satan is insane. And so he probably thought he had won at this moment. But as these thoughts of victory, as he strikes the seed's heel went through his mind. How discomforting it must have been for him when he realized that the Son of God could have come down from the cross, but didn't. How discomforting it must have been for the serpent when he realized that the Son of God could have called legions of angels from heaven to fight this war, but he didn't. How discomforting it must have been for the serpent when Jesus turns to the criminal being crucified next to him and says, today you will be with me in paradise. And as he has struck the heel of the seed of the woman, the seed of the woman just took one of the children of the devil and made them into a child of God. How discomforting it must have been when Jesus fulfilled all scripture by taking a drink of sour wine. And how discomforting it must have been when Jesus cried out with a loud, victorious voice, it is finished, and breathed his last. And how discomforting for the devil it must have been when the Roman centurion who stood at the cross guarding the body of Christ that was hanging there saw the way he died and said, truly, this man was the son of God. And left the domain of darkness and entered the kingdom of light. When Jesus hung on that cross, he was crushing Satan's head. And the salvation of the thief and the salvation of the centurion are prime evidences that Jesus wasn't being defeated on the cross, but he was just beginning to plunder Satan's kingdom. It's no wonder that Satan had his people make that tomb as secure as they could so that Jesus couldn't come back from the dead, couldn't arise from the dead, and they did everything they could to secure it with the stone and a seal and the best guards. And three days later, Jesus blew it all away as he rose from the dead, defeating death itself, defeating sin, breaking the curse. It tells us in Colossians 2 that Jesus made fools of the demonic powers. And he destroyed the devil's works as he rose from that grave. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says this, The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. And my friends, Jesus succeeded in that purpose when he rose from the grave. And through his resurrection, we have been set free. And the devil's works have been destroyed. His head has been crushed. When Jesus came out of the grave, the reason for his birth became so wonderfully clear. He came to overcome Satan. Why was he born? To crush the serpent's head. 